Chicago, Detroit, a lot of major cities. Donald Trump has made a statement about Baltimore. So we're trying to let everybody know, not only here, but throughout the country. Baltimore, we do got a lot of good things to offer. It's kind of a line dancing, going out with the things like that. So come on, y'all, give it up for Baltimore. Thank you, thank you. Good. Let's, let's introduce my first guest today, okay? He's from Baltimore as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for AJDs. There you go. Come on, man. Come on, man. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. We're gonna welcome Dean. Dean, man, how you feeling today? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good pretty good. Listen, man, you've been line dancing for some time now. We just want to kind of let the audience know just a little bit about your background and history. Um, I've known Dean for almost ten years myself, and I first met Dean. He was hand dancing. And I just want to ask him to share with us his transition from line from hand dancing to line dancing. Man, please do it. Well, I started line dancing. Well, I had danced first for years, mm -hmm. and I started. Um, there was a show in Baltimore called Moon Man. He's here now, but he started with us years ago. So I made it my first dance to Moon Man Walk over 40 years ago. So it wasn't like this is new to me. I had been on the dance period, but that's when I started. That's basically it, and then I, um, I stayed into hand dancing for years, and then I just morphed back over to my line dance, but I still do both in there. I have 17 classes in, in, uh, in line dancing. And I really, really? Say again? Well, I'm really down to 14 because I gave three of them up. Okay, that's good, okay, okay, that's good. But let me tell you something. I have one hell of a support system. Because I can't do this by myself. Right. And I have a group of people that work with me this time. I give them a hand for real. Now, with the, with the different types of line dances coming out, the new dances, how do you um, in, 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 fit that into your, your classes, man? Well, it's difficult because you want, you know, people think because you say they're a beginner. They're not beginner dancers, they're just new to line dance. Okay. So most of the people that are coming over, they say, well, I understand you're not really a beginner because if you've danced before, you're just a basically a dancer. So you just have to adapt. And um, I make it possible that my beginners are going to do the same basic dances okay. that everybody else does. They'll have to take a turn out and put it back in. You know, it makes it fun because if they can't get on the floor and dance it, you know, when other people are dancing, you know, we alienate them. That's so so that's I do have to do yep, that's true. That's right. Okay, good, good. Um, one thing that Dee does do, he put on an event, the, the Baltimore Line Dance Brunch. Yeah. Um, he does it. Tell me a little bit about that, man. This is a nice event that you do. Well, I do a fifth Sunday event. I was just fortunate to pick it back off something that Randy Dennis uh, was doing before me. But uh, every fifth Sunday I do an event, and we have made it, you all have made it. Thank you. Unreal. Right. Because I have... Three to four, um, no, so never 300, about 400 plus people every time we have an event. And we have people that come from all over the country. Right. Not just here, they come from all over the country. Yeah. Right, I mean, again, it started off as a Baltimore thing, right? Yes. And it's on, on Sunday. 
So we got people come from all over the country. On a Sunday. Sunday. On a Sunday. What time is it? From what to what? From 12 to 5. They drive up and they don't basically stay over. They drive up and go back home. Yeah. You know, so that, that's a that's feat true. in itself. That's true. That's true. But we have a good time. That's true. What do you see going down? How far are you going to take this, man? Well, as far as it let me go. Uh, okay, good. You know, good. what we do, and I don't care, I don't know how other cities do it. I have a class at 12, at 11 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, where I have instructors basically that all that from the Baltimore area, we get together. Right. And what do we do? We work on dances that they are all doing. I mean, this is really crazy. We all get together and have a good time. We don't have to like each other, but we like dance. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. And another thing that we do is if any of the 10 of the people that we know in Avril Circle is having a party, guess what we do? We all take at least one day. So, if nothing else, we can guarantee you at least 100 people. If you can't get the rest of them on your own, that's just your That's right. That's right. Okay. Good, good. Now, I want to close it out with this question because, you know, we're here at the UC Star Wars uh, event weekend, and these you've been coming for a while. My question to you, man, what do you think of about UC Star Wars and where, and where it's going? Well, first off, it has progressed. Yeah. Unreal. Okay. And just the camaraderie. When, you, when our students come here, and they meet the same people that we're doing their dances. And you know, it's just mesmerizing them. You know, we're doing their dances, but here we are meeting those same, same people. Right. So it can only get bigger. Right. It can right. only get bigger. Okay, we're good. Well, thank you, man. Thank you, please. Everybody stand up and just put your hands together. Thank you. who stayed in the room, who hung in there. Some of y'all were still there at one o'clock. Yeah. Uh, would not have been possible without James High Energy Club. Yeah. I am the founder of Line Dance Fever and Fitness, but he is the future of Line Dance Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Share with us a little bit about you and Line Dance and your community and what you do down there. So we're in North Carolina. Uh, we've been line dancing since 2009. We do a party every month, and we have been since we started in 2009. The first party, we have the old video, had about 30 people. We still did food, because that's what we do. <laughs> and we had a little dance studio, and now we've grown. So we're at the same venue every month, and we average about 100 people, and we've been as much as a couple of hundred people except for my birthday party, which was crazy. Which was crazy. <laughs> wow. What are your challenges in, in terms of traveling when you go out to different line dance uh, uh, events and things like that? So line dancing is an expensive habit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we all know that. But it's also an addiction. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Because it nurtures our soul. Yeah. Uh -huh. What has the most meaning for me is it's the God in me because it's the God in all of us that just helps us to realize that we need to do that for our own sanity. Right? So it's expensive, but we make room in the budget. Yeah, that's, right. that's, right. that's a challenge, but that's we right. bless it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's right. And in your in your experience, your most memorable experience in terms of line dance, a place that you can hold dear to your heart. So, most memorable. Let me tell you how I met this man right here in okay. Union Crew. I, I respect this. I respect this. It's why I tell you it's the God in me. I met him at Southeast's largest line dance party. Anybody remember that? Yeah. He didn't know me from Adam. He saw me working with my group because we were going to showcase. 
and he came up to me and said, I like the way you teach. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you at the UC Star Wars. Girlfriend didn't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> he said, call me. So I called him, and that is why I was here in 2012. So the dance, Come Dance With Me, the first time I taught here, I introduced that dance. Wow. That is a country western line dance yeah. to an R&B song. Yeah. And it's because of this man right oh, here. Man. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really great. Yeah, the question that I asked you from actually the same thing in terms of EC Star Wars. We really put heart and soul into this event, okay? Let us know what we can do better to make it better for our audience, please. Uh, I, I think that, that what you do, you do so well, and you keep improving over time. Right. What I like is that you're recognizing that we have a lot of new talent that's come in, a lot of new choreographers, yeah. and you are embracing them. Right. You need to continue to do that. We need to nurture our babies. Y'all are our babies. Y'all are coming behind us. We the 60-somethings and the 70-somethings, right? But y'all are the babies, and so y'all are coming. We got to nurture you. We got to invite you in because you are the ones that are going to keep this thing going. Oh, That's why man. I said James is the future. Y'all are our future. Please, please, thank you so much. Put your hands together, everybody. Please stand up. Thank you so much, everybody. All the way from Atlanta. Yeah. Woo. We're gonna get the music right for this man. I'm telling you right now. We're gonna turn it up. You ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands up for y'all know Reggie Nose Sutherland. some sleep, I'm going to bed about 2 o'clock. Oh, okay, man. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Listen, man, I want people to know a little bit more about Southside Steppers, please, and also how you, when you first came on the scene, man, it was about 100 of you guys. It really was. Southside, y'all came out strong. Yeah. But let me know, how I mean, tell a little bit about Southside Steppers, because I know y'all are going to celebrate our 11th year anniversary. Yeah, yeah, you celebrate our 10th year last year. Sure did. And I thank God for that, because, uh, you guys that have been around live dancing a long time know that if you make it to five years, right. you've done something really That's special. Right. Right. Um, I've been teaching line dancing since 2006. I uh, started Southside uh, Steppers in 2008. And right now, uh, currently, well, our membership has been as high as 230. Um, and right now, our membership is right at about 49, which is probably the best number you can be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Right okay. Okay. Somebody back there said, Reg, I want to know the T. If you want to know the T, just go ahead and oh, I'll tell you the T. Yeah. Okay, okay. Are you still bring you still bring hype, man. How long have you been line dancing? You I've been, been line dancing personally since 2006. Okay. Since 2006. Okay, so good. What's that, about 14 years? Yeah. Yeah, about 14 yeah, years. And I'm also, you do some choreographing. So tell me the, the dance that you choreograph. Um, one of, I guess, the first, um, yeah. One of the first few dances that I choreographed and that won an award in 2012 was Bring It Back. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, I've done days like this. I've done a couple of other dances, but those are perhaps the two most probably well known. Okay. Okay. Now, I do notice uh, sometimes I go to different places. If you travel, you travel in terms of line dances. How do you deal with the cost and expenses of traveling, man, from city to city? It, you, you know, Lee, oh. Lee had the perfect answer. Yes. <laughs> this, this is an expensive hobby. But uh, th th there is no money in line dance. Okay. There's only passion, love, creativity, and longevity. And if you do it, the longer you do it, thank you, the, the longer you do it, the better you feel. It ain't got nothing to do with me because the more we have activity of our limbs, Oh, yeah, I heard. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you what pastor said right like there. You missed the free, you missed the shouting point. 
As long as you got the activity of you live, that's good. Please, if you don't mind, share. Please share the audience uh, your experience with the Capital Jazz Cruise. Oh, yeah. This is important, guys. You gotta hear this. Capital Jazz Super Cruise. Um, I teach line dancing. I've been honored uh, enough to teach line dancing. I actually follow Randy Dennis. Randy Dennis taught line dancing on the cruise yeah. before me, and uh, due to circumstances, then they asked me. He couldn't do it anymore. They asked me, and I humbly accepted. And I've been doing it now. This was my eighth year. Wow. I've been doing it eight years. And there is, some of y'all have students in y'all class that I have, that I have sent to you because I, I met them and they were exposed to line dancing on the Capital Jazz Super Cruise. Right. So, I've been doing it eight years. It's been a wonderful experience. I just came off the cruise and I flew here yesterday. We got in at, we got in at seven. I was on the plane by 10. I was here by 12. Yeah. It's an expensive oh, no. habit. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Um, the most important because you're going to ask that guy right here in terms of using Star Wars, man. What do you think about it in the direction that we're going? Okay. Tell us your experience. My experience with UC Star Wars, um, I was in uh, North Carolina. It was a North Carolina Leeds event. And, um, and I met you and Tris and y'all said, well, look, man, we got we to gotta get you to UC Star Wars. And, and, you know, my experience with line dancing is people want to use us. They want to invite us to their club because they see numbers. What they, what, what they see is people having a good time and they want that in their clubs and they equate that to buying drinks, buying food, yeah. and you're going to keep coming back. So when people come, to, <clears throat> excuse me, so when people come to me with a scheme, uh, hey, I need you to come to my award show. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> now, no, 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 listen to me now. But I'm trying to tell you something because you don't want to be used in your own experiences and where your own location. So when people come to you and say, I got this great idea, tell me about it. Uh, but uh, after research, after speaking with some of my line dance family, Cecily, Lisa, uh, Lisa, all of them, all in the fact, they say, hey, Rich, this is a real thing. We came in 2012 and we have not missed. And we will not miss. If you want, you got to have something that's bigger than you. That's right. You got to have something that, regardless of whether it's correct, incorrect, but the vision and the strategic thought behind the UC Star Wars is the best. Thank you, thank you. And we as a line dance community have to stay with it, stick to it, and make it be what God made it to be. Because it was only through his vision that he gave you the vision to create this UC Star Wars. And thank God we got to keep it because it's good. All right, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Listen, come on now. Put your hands together, please. What do you say? Put your the vision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a surprise guest today. These young ladies in line dancing, I'm telling you, at least 20 to 25 years. We gotta hear her story. We gotta hear her tell us all her experience and her adventures. Please come on, man. Put that music on for her. Please come on down here. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hand together for Miss Shane Holmes! <laughs> Now please let people know how you Okay, let me tell you how it all started. I'm at work, right? Good government job. <laughs> and uh, my buddy on the other side of the office, I had my office, I was office director. I made it to the top. She knocked on the on the wall. I said, what's up? I knocked again. She said, be going dan dancing. What? This is 1999. I had danced a long time. She said, meet me at the club. I said, where are you going? She said, Silver Shadow, Columbia, across from the mall. I said, I'll be there. I go up to Silver Shadow, 1999 in the fall, and there's a smooth brother from Baltimore called Douglas. Okay. Baba, hand dancer, line dancer, and I learned a dance called Bounce Two, and the rest is history. I said, what? Well, sure. I learned that. I learned three dances that night. I said, and where's the rest? There was a DJ there called DJ Lady D. Some of y'all may know her in the DMV area. She said, come on over to Andrews Air Force Base when they would let us on the base. And uh, I'm going to be at a Christmas party. So I went there and saw this bad group called Stepping Out Production. 
two yards from Baltimore. Baltimore said, what? Yvonne stood, and uh, AJD's knows Yvonne, because she's a smooth dancer. She had a group called SOP. Okay. I said, what was that? So over the Art Social Club, Pennsylvania Avenue in Baltimore, we go to the line dance. I couldn't learn fast enough. I kind of learned fast. She said, go downstairs. Downstairs, it was really doing it. Then she invited me to join her group, which is a line dance performing group. We have 32 dancers, boppers, hand dancers, wow. Wow. line dancers. Okay. And that's when it started for 1999. So, oh, what, 20 good. years later? Yeah, that's good. 20 years later. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? So, that's how it started for me. Now, not only are you an instructor, but you're a choreograph choreographer as well. I'm a choreographer. Okay. I've always been a I, I started as a cheerleader coach. Back in the day, uh, my sons were playing football and basketball. We were at a Catholic school, and I began um, putting a cheerleading group together. So, I would go to Howard University and watch, I'd go to University of Maryland and watch. And I took some pretty young African-American females and taught them the best, and we wore it out. People would come and say, oh, St. Margaret's is here. Them pretty girls would sit up there, and I had a dress rehearsal with the mothers being the judge. So by the time we got to this academic, yeah. it was all a history. And the parents would be like, go. I said, no. <laughs> So that's when I started, choreographing cheerleading routines, building pyramids before all this backflipping and stuff. I didn't do that. Crash of pyramids and the pretty girls with those jumps and the toes pointed. That's when it started right, for me. Right, right. And what do you think your most uh, famous line dance that you created? Well, Chuck Bates. Chuck Bates. Yeah. 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 So let me tell you, let me tell you a little bit about Chuck Bates. I'm from the uh, D.C. area. Went to Spindon High School, Easton McKinley. If you all know from the D.M.D. <laughs> So my teen sons, who are now 49, 50, so old am I. <laughs> anyway, my teen sons, I grew up with them. We grew up listening to Rare Essence, Chuck Brown and the Soul Surges. And I was in the basement one morning. I said, what is, I turned it up, and it was the music, Chuck Baby. And in 30 minutes, I did that dance. Wow. It just, it just hit me. You know, sometimes stuff hits you, and you move when it hits you. You want to buy that suit? Let me go ahead and get that now, because if I come back, it may not be it. Right, I went in the basement, I said, we make it easy. And the music made, you know, that go-go music has a different flavor, a different okay. rhythm to it. And that's the first time I moved backwards in a dance. Now, why I decided to move backwards, only you choreographers know what <laughs> I took that thing backwards and then did a spin and came around. Now, where that came from, I don't know. Give it a hand, give it a hand. I gotta give you a list of that. Because it means something else. Yeah. All right, so I said, so I said, this darn thing. So Renee, she, she may be in here, Renee in Baltimore. I went over to a party in Baltimore. Terry had a birthday party. I said, I got a new dance, and I put the music on. It's the go-go music. The industry had not heard DC go-go. Right. That right. sold it. The, the fact that the dance was easy sold it again. Okay. And in 2005, we just started turning the line dance to two walls. Because I grew up dancing that same steps, four walls. I don't know what it was. We went about all four walls. Yeah. We started doing two walls, 2005, seven, then it was one wall. And now the rest is history. Most of the dances now are two wall, one wall. Right. So that's and the transition I've seen. And so many people don't know that you did some line dance competition as well. Oh, yeah. But also, let me know about LDC. I started that a group called Lynn Dancing Club. Lynn's my middle name. Okay. Uh, back in 2000. So we've been out here 20 years this year. We were been out as a group for 20 years. Wow. And uh, that's because I was coming to Baltimore and I got tired of making that trek. And I would come over there and the class, class canceled. When I came from P, just 40 miles away, what? I said, look. I said, I'm gonna have to start doing this thing on my side of town. That's right. So I started LDC and we started competing and dancing and I'm Kenny ain't here and, and, and Ray ain't here. I'll tell you what about that deal. I won first place one time. Over here in Baltimore, the first line dance competition at the slide competition with the hand dancers, Brad did that. And uh, we won first place. The second time, God, dog Ray came down with a cape on. And the judges said, Woo! I said, There you go. I knew what to do. Oh, we were sharp though. We gave him rubbers. When he threw that cape across the floor, yes. I said, There you go. Yeah. All right, so we got second place. Then we got second place again, and that's how doggone Kenny J came down there. <laughs> <laughs> but then, look, 
I ain't gonna tell you, don't get be mad at me. But I used to go to Philly, and you talk about some line dancers. You talk about speed and skill. That's why I learned it. I said, no, he didn't bring the best. So he's all, he came down there with the killers. I said, but that's all right. We gave him a round of those money. So look, at the end, I said, we got sick. And look, we went up in the room. They said, God, God they took her from us. I said, yeah, they danced it from us too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all in fun, you know? It was all in fun. So we, we've done a lot. I've choreographed about 12 showcase routines. I love to showcase. Look, my husband said, you ain't seen a dance for you don't like. I said, you ain't lying. So I've done about 12 showcases. I love to do that. Those are four or five yeah. minute routines. We are very good at that. We enjoy it. Right. We take it on the road and people enjoy it. Because when you say you're putting on a show, give me a show. Right. Give me something. Show right. me something that yeah. you're not thinking about doing. So we do that. I've done about 12 line dances. Okay. So I don't, I could do a line dance in a week, but who wants to do that? You know, I just love to do the showcases. Okay. I've cool. done about 10 or 12 line dances. But the Chuck Baby, the good and bad of Chuck Baby is, I thought to get it copyrighted. I didn't think that when they called me from the United States Olympic Committee and asked me could they do that dance in the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. Wow. I said yes too fast. Wow. Guess what I didn't ask for? Right. Take me with you. Right. That's part of why I went on to create a certification program where I began to learn. I have an attorney, and that attorney would have told me leverage that dance, take it and make it work for you. And I've right. learned, I learned a lot about that because, you know, I didn't, didn't think, I loved the Olympic Games. I could have gone, but I didn't ask to go. Good, good. That dance was copyrighted. They called me and asked, could they do the dance steps? Not the music, I, my pattern of the steps. Right, okay. So. Good. All right, good. Well, I'm good. I, well, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I like nights too. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the LDC, you are performing. Uh, we might do something for you tonight. You might be talking about. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I want Lou to pass the hat. <laughs> I wait, just wait, wait, wait. I just wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Anyway, I love, we love to put on a show. Uh, that's what we, we do pretty well. Okay. And so we'll be dancing tonight along with some other great groups tonight. Good. Now let the audience know once again, like I said, about everybody else. How long have you been coming to UC Star Wars? And what do you think I, about I started uh, 2008 with okay. UC Awards. I've been to about five okay. over the years. Okay. I enjoy coming. Uh, I think in terms of growth, UC Awards needs to continue to outreach to our new dancers, the younger dancers, okay. to find a way to get them involved. Um, the transition is... I don't like all some of the new stuff they're doing, but if we can find a way to merge the basic steps and turns and moves with the new music and okay. the new ways of interpreting, I think we'll grow together. Okay, good. But from my vantage point, if I see certain things and I say, oh, what is that? I'm not doing that. I'm at the stage now where, oh, that's not done. I ain't doing it. I just won't do it. If I don't like it, I don't do it. I ain't mad at you. But that's not for me. So what we need to do is figure out how to pull the two together, mm -hmm. how to bring some of the old with the new, because there are dances that are done all over the country that we've never seen. I got some dances up the sleeve from Baltimore that you all think are bad. They didn't put that, it's just outstanding. Right, right, you right. think it's a new dance? No. Right. We did it before you came on the floor. Yeah, it's outstanding. It's a lot of old dances. We need to bring the old back with the new. That's good. That's good. That's good. Come on, y'all. Please, put your hands together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is true. Anybody have any questions to ask any people from the background or line dance? Just a general question about the industry. Hi, y'all. I'm, I'm Cedar Brown from North Carolina. I'm with LDFF, also Bull City Sliders, Lee Williams, Florida. I'll just question some of what personal. I'm a family girl. Kids and all that, just little tips on how you balance that. Cause, you know, financing is expensive, and you know how you balance that being everything that you are. Let me just answer that real quickly, and I'll pass it around. I can answer that only because a new young lady that's showcasing the best tonight has two children, and what she has to do when she comes to our practice is to get a babysitter. 
So she's got to be able to know in advance what she's got to do, how much it's going to cost her, what the cost to showcase is, because she's taking care of daycare. Every time she moves to a practice or moves to go out, she's got to figure out how she takes care of her children. So I think that's a serious concern, and maybe other people can attest to how there are funds or programs out here to help young mothers so that they can have some free time and uh, have the children well cared for and come onto the dance floor. Lee? So a little bit of a different answer. In our family, they bring the babies with them. <laughs> They're called noise-canceling headphones. So we have them that come to us at three months. They strap them on. If you've never seen the video, we have one. She strapped the baby in front of her, and that baby knew mommy is doing something that mommy needs to do. Right? No tears, no crying, no nothing. We have another one who's been with us since she was six months old, who loves James. <laughs> She goes up and stands in front of the class next to him, like, this my man. <laughs> so you bring him with you, just like we are seeding into you, we're seeding into them. You saw that baby dancing in that video, okay? You start them right then. So we have them as early as three months. They're called noise-canceling headphones. If you ain't got none, get some. I have something to say. Luckily, my children are 50. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about bringing nobody <laughs> other than yourself. So I'm fine. Where's the little one? He's one of them. I ain't got nothing for my baby. I'm sitting. <laughs> All right, here we got a question over here. Do you have for those of us that are getting older so that our minds don't kind of just get flopped and don't want to do anything? I'm 73 and I own it. I own mine. I own mine. I'm 73. And believe me, it is a task in itself because I'm up at night working on stuff to teach in class because. Even at my age, after I do it today, I might not even know it tomorrow, okay? <laughs> so believe me, it's a task in itself. So what I do is I prepare. I taught school for years, and what I do is I get a lesson plan. So you're not coming to my class and tell me you want to do the wobble because I've already set up what I'm going to do. Right. Okay? So that's how I do mine. That's right. Okay, so AJ is 73, and I will be 67 in April. Okay? So, you know, just so you know, the research has been done. Line dancing is excellent for the brain. Every line dance is different. It's writing patterns on your brain. So every time you learn a different line dance, it's writing a new pattern on your brain. So it's doing immense things for the body that we don't even think of. So, like AJ said, we prepare, and as you get older, it takes a little bit more time to prepare. That's why I've got James. <laughs> so it takes a little bit more time to prepare, but it does wonders for you. So I say keep on dancing. The largest demographic that line dances is what? Seniors. 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 I just have one comment to add about staying in shape and, and longevity. Uh, stay active. Exercise, line dance, like uh, Lee says. I do laps. I swim four days a week in the morning, and then I I uh, practice in a studio where I love to dance, work on routines. I dance two, three hours every other day. So it's up to you to figure out what's good for you. Right. Everybody has to figure out what works and helps them stay in shape. I just have to work on the weight problem. It's, it's coming on fast. Like, where did that come from? So in any event, so just pick your own personal lifestyle of exercise and stay in your shape, stay on the dance floor. That helps. You ready? Come on, Red. I'm 58. He the baby. But Candy, you know how much I love you. Did y'all know she was a Washington Redskin cheerleader? Uh-huh. Turn it around when you did it. Uh-huh. You know what to do this thing, dude. You know exactly what to do. Uh, Thank you, 
you good morning, praise God. Praise um, God. Praise him. Uh -oh. <laughs> My name is Cynthia Niles, a.k.a. Reverend Cynthia Niles. I started with two groups. Um, the first one is a Savvy Soul Line Dancers in Brooklyn, and there is a senior group. And then I transitioned to Brooklyn Groovers, which is here today. Um, line dancing has been phenomenal, but I wanted to say last night was just great. However, uh, the Beginner's Bash was phenomenal. Here's what I, uh, I want to say, is that since I've been line dancing, this, and this is the fifth year, um, I am now coordinating a line dancing fundraiser for the Brooklyn Sunday School Union in Brooklyn. Wow. And we're, uh, we're trying to break into a new venue because a lot of church people, uh, like myself at one point in time, was so churched that we thought line dancing was something evil. And as, a, as a, an associate minister in Brooklyn with two historical Baptist churches, um, I'm pastor of both of my line dance wow. groups. So it is to God be all the glory for the great things. Thank you, thank you. Come on, y'all. Thank you. That's good. Some suggestions as dances or some suggestions in your expertise and directives as to what we should do. Thank you. I've been doing for the last like year and a half, I do a lot of church venues. And at first I was actually changing the music to accommodate, you know, the the, the audience. And one, the first lady of one of the churches told me, I came to your class to dance. I hired you behind the music that you were playing. So I DX that and I just started playing, you know, I, I, I monitor the music, but I'm not gonna change it. And like I said, if, if your people can't understand that, they don't even need to, they don't need to be there, for real. Last one. All right. Uh, I'm from the Road Dancers. Nikki is my uh, teacher right there. Uh -huh. uh, where most of us are, what we do? Uh, <laughs> most of us are older and we have, we have senior dance class. I just wanted to know what is the line dance community doing about trying to merge that senior class with the younger class? So we can be on the same accord as, as far as the, what we are putting out there in front of the public. I just want to know what are y'all doing to try to get the younger group combined with the older group? I think that uh, piggybacks on some of the things I was talking about is bringing some of the old with the new, uh, learning how to take some of the more simpler dances, and just adding some hot music to it. I mean, when I teach a class, I don't necessarily have to use the same music. I'll teach it the way the choreographer uh, choreographed it and the music that was associated with the dance steps. However, I will change that music, and if it's too fast, I'll slow it down. Eight, step, eight steps to eight beats of music is eight beats of music. It doesn't have to be fast all the time. So to answer that, we need to find a way to be creative and merge the two industries, the two senior with the younger, and use it through the dances. You all as instructors and dancers know what's easy to do. You know what you have fun doing. Do the fun easy, put it to the different kind of music, merge the two groups together. It may be that you start with something separate and then pull the groups together by doing that dance that everybody can do to the newer festive music. So I think line dancing is one of the communities where I'm just a person. Y'all don't treat me like I'm 67. Yeah? And y'all don't treat seniors like we're seniors. You're still choreographing dances that are beginner dances beginner level, like you just started, and intermediate and advanced, you're using the same steps, right? So what we do is we teach steps, because we say that if we can teach you steps, those steps are repeating in all of the dances. It doesn't matter what level they are. And so, when I taught James, what I taught him was a language. So we use a language in line dancing, that's why last night we instructed a lot in the beginner room because we could. We used a language. What you heard was a language. So what I would say to the instructors is teach them steps. The steps will be applicable regardless of the level of dance. That's how you integrate the communities. Uh, and I just, I just want to add um, that when you're, when you're teaching and they come into the room, don't do this. Uh, 
they just they just walked in. No, they didn't just walk in. They did walk in. You accept them, and they need to accept you. Okay, it's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. You can't go well. Now that they're here, we got to do this level of dance. No, you have your playlists, you have your dances, you do your dances, you invite them. If they want to know, you teach them. I tell you, one of the first things I did was I took the, the steps to, I called a choreographer, asked for permission, ma'am, I want to change the song to your dance because this is what I think would attract this, this level. And you know, they, they, you, know, you know what she's saying? Sure, thank you for doing my dance. Okay, you pay respect that you pay respect that that way to the choreographer, but you don't you you invite them and you have an open heart and open mind. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We, we have uh, two more questions, one from the back and the front. Okay. Two more questions. Here we go. Um, Mr. Mark Moon from Chicago. Um, I have a question for these two gentlemen up here, Mr. Sasha Aspect and uh, Exact. There doesn't seem to be a lot of brothers in line dancing. What could you two guys suggest to try to encourage more men to get involved in line dancing? Thank you for your question. The first thing, I'm going to say, you want to get more men involved? Get more ladies involved. Because the men that come in the club, the, the, well, the, I got exactly a whole three men in my group. But uh, I still have brothers that come to class and they just say, hey, look, I love it. And, and they love it because they see her looking and they be like, that girl doing that girl. I say, and I go to them and I say, you know what, let's have a drink. Why don't you just go do it with her? Go do it with her. Boom. Here comes Steven. Here comes uh, Kevin. And they're there. And, and, and that's, that's how you get them. When they, when they come through the door, you go up to them as an instructor, as a male instructor. You greet them, you make them feel at home. And then you say, hey man, come on, you can do this too. Because all we want to do is a simple right, left. Left, right. Uh, but when, a but when, a you're a little bop with a tap, that's what I'm talking about. But we're going to do it. Well, my situation is slightly different because my men are basically some of my better dancers. Okay, in my class. And Lum, Jerome, have a group of people that stay right back in the back and they work with our ladies and they love them. They love them. They take the time and they work with them. Like I said, uh, because I have a class that's it's complete. It's, it's just a diversity. So, my guys, I have ladies too. Rosita, my best partner. She helps, helps me out a lot. But my guys in the back help in, in, in this when they come in, I say, do me a favor, go back in the back, and my guys will work with you. And um, as long as you show an interest in them, they'll come back, because i got a big place. One thing I, I think uh, I would add to that, I have a younger son that just flat out dance. He will not come dance with me. So I ask my son, I just, I can't do it, I don't want to do it. So maybe some of us, some of the women, can get our nephews and our young sons and their friends and try and get them to come to a class with you. Just make it something special for them and show them how much fun it is. Because my, like I said, my son can flat out dance. He just won't do it. Now he'll come to my cabaret. We used to give a cabaret once a year, every year. And he'd get out there and work with me. But he just, for some reason, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a male thing, I don't know. But maybe that's a strategy. Let's try and pull our sons or our nephews and bring them to one of our events. Get them out there, put them on the floor, something easy. And maybe we can... Try and bridge that gap. Okay, okay, good. Here's okay. right, our last question, okay? Last and final question. Last but not least, Curtis. Come on, Curtis. Come on, <laughs> Come on, Curtis. <laughs> <What? laughs> My name is Curtis Wood. I'm from Detroit. First of all, I'd like to commend uh -oh. all of these uh -oh. sisters and brothers out there. I love you all. But I want to, I'm with the New Hustle Generation Dance Nation, and I'm formerly of United We Dance. So I wanted to piggyback with the brother in the back when we talk about seniors. Now, people know for years that I've always said 80% of the people that dance with us are over 50. Now, look how many, how many young people are here? None. Under 50, you think about that. 
everybody in here is over four at least. You see nobody through. Dang, okay, but what I'm saying is that if I give an event in Detroit and I have four or five hundred people, at least a hundred, a hundred and fifty people are going to be seniors. You take care of the seniors first. So if I do something and they're there at eight or nine, I'm going to take care of those seniors then. People know that. And we incorporate both. If you don't like it, you just don't come. And because that's how it is, you have to look at it. all of us like now. I just had hip replacement surgery three months ago. I have to pace myself. <laughs> I can't go out here and do all this jumping and stuff, you know, but, but the younger people are gonna have to understand that. They should be in here, they aren't. You know, so like any time if we gave a party, we would have equal two ballrooms. So I went over there um, and last night, it was packed. So maybe they need to be in the ballroom. You know, I'm with them just being realistic. Okay. Because look at what's in there. Right. Look what you got in there. Probably do that. That's why I said. Come on, y'all. Play. Put your hands together. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much for coming out. Can you see some of that pop song? That's right here. Yeah. Thank you. These two are the Come on, y'all. Thank you.